What's up guys? Hey, it's Colton Lindsay here with the WGR Live. I'm super stoked about today's interview. Hopefully this live stream doesn't mess up because I've been trying to hustle Mr. Sean Whalen to get on here for a minute when it comes to doing this live stream. So for those of you guys that don't know Sean, he's founder of the company Lions Not Sheep, uh, author of the book, How to Make Shit, How to Make Shit Happen, I believe is the name of the book. But what's really cool about him is he's taken this approach to uh, business on more of an authentic level, right? So I will just preface this conversation that there may be some uh, language that's not appropriate for those younger kids. So give him just a second. Make sure to like, comment, share, and turn on those notifications if you haven't already so you can see more of these killer interviews. So he's coming on right now. Patience. Patience. What up, Sean? How you doing, my Hello. man? Good, man. What's going on? Good. First of all, I want to appreciate you for hanging on or hopping on here with me. Is your camera kind of jacked up? No, it's just making me turn it sideways. So uh, it's all good. We'll see out. I've been hustling to get you on my podcast for like six or eight months, so I just figured I'd keep bugging until you actually hopped on here. So thanks for being on here, dude. Hell yeah, man. For sure. So uh, one of the first things that I want is just take maybe 60 seconds for those on uh, my audience that don't know who you are on where you were to where you're at. And I know 60 seconds isn't very long, but I'd love to hear that real quickly. So I, am, uh, I run a, uh, a company, own a company. I'm the founder of a company called Lions Not Sheep. So uh, we are all over the place. We do coaching. We do consulting. We help people tell the truth. We scale businesses. And uh, we have a shit ton of fun. So is it a shit ton of fun? Is like that a requirement? Like you can't be in the, in the group if you're not having fun? Look, man, if you're alive, you should be having fun. If I have to tell you to have fun, you, you should just like roll over and die right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, sure. So. So let's take a step back because I followed you a little bit. You had lost a couple of businesses or had some real estate failures back in 2008. Is that, is that accurate? Uh, somewhat. So I, I made a ton of money in my early 20s uh, in real estate. And uh, then I invested a ton of that money. And when the market crashed in 2008, I lost my ass. Uh, and at the same time, started another company that crushed it. So uh, one of my companies was going bankrupt. Uh, the other company was making millions, and it was the juggling act of making millions and going bankrupt that uh, wore me out, and I ended up uh, essentially just checking out a life for a couple of years. So burned the whole thing to the ground, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what I was doing. So what, what happened in that stage? Was it like you were trying to out-hustle the, the pressure, or, or, or how did you deal with that to where you're like, fuck it, I'm done? How did I deal with it? I literally said, fuck it, I'm done. And, and I bounced. I, I left my business. I left my marriage. I left my friends. I left basically life. So, you know, I mean, I, I was doing what most other guys were doing, which is I was hustling. I was grinding. I was working, you know, 20 hours a day thinking this is what success was. And at the end of the day, it, 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 that's not what success is. You know, I mean, we hear a lot in the marketplace, hustle, grind, hustle, grind. And I did that and it burned me the fuck out. Yeah. And ultimately, you know, I, I, it's, it started wearing on me emotionally, psychologically, the whole deal. And, and it just, it, uh, I ended up burning everything to the ground. I just, I literally did, I said, fuck it. So some guys will sedate with alcohol, with drugs, with pornography, with whatever, whatever. I was just like, fuck it. I just bounced from life. So what was the number one takeaway? Cause obviously you bounced from the business, you bounced from your marriage, you bounced from everything. What was your number one takeaway and how did you shift it to even launch a better business going forward? Um, I stopped lying to be completely candid. Uh, I thought, look, I grew up in a single parent home and I don't think my story is that much different than a lot of entrepreneurs that are out there. Um, you know, we, we, we have a misconception. We meaning the marketplace, the world has a misconception of what alpha really is. And alpha is that like, fuck you. I got every answer. I'm just going to rape and pillage and fucking destroy the world. And (laughs) that's not really what an alpha is, but that's what I thought it was. Yeah. And so I was like grinding, 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 trying to solve every problem. And when I didn't have an answer, I would just lie that I had an answer. When people were like, how you doing? I'd be like, I'm fucking great. But inside, I wanted to kill myself. And so, you know, I, I ended up burning everything to the ground. And, and really the biggest takeaway was, you know, it was just I did it myself. I, I brought on the pain. I brought on the frustration uh, simply because I wasn't willing to tell the truth. And so, you know, the radical shift that happened to me is I told the truth as I said, look, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't know how to manage millions of dollars. I'd never had it before. And I didn't know how to be a fucking a good husband. I didn't know how to do a lot of these things. And, 
And it was me really just admitting who I was and telling the truth, which a lot of people think is like being a pussy or whatever, whatever. Yeah. That's the most powerful shit, period. You right. know what I mean? The most powerful thing is the truth. And, and sometimes the truth is dirty. Sometimes the truth is nasty. Sometimes the truth is ugly. Sometimes the truth literally like will drive people to go, you know, into divorce, but nonetheless, it's still the truth. And, and so, you know, my biggest takeaway was that I, I just, I got to tell the truth. So once you were able to get authentic and true with yourself and it kind of set you free, what, what was it that then you realized was going on with, with part of society and not being authentic? I mean, is this a plague? I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the power just went out for the second time today. So you can still, now the power's back on. <laughs> <laughs> we're having like a massive freaking it's like literally like tornado freaking force winds and the power's gone out twice today so i think we should still be here but you you broke up for a second what was your question yeah so so my question was is because that's the thing i've observed right i went through this experience with um the native american church and i i was able to get real with myself and the fact that i didn't know how to be a real man right like i was like this fucking man wrapped in a woman wrapped in a fake man sort of thing like trying to then like win over the fake women that have wrapped in this fake man wrapped around this woman right and yeah. so it was, I, I felt like i'd hit this stage in my life where i was like the manliest of the pussies but in my mind i was this alpha right so right. once i was able to move forward and just like really be a man i started to observe these patterns inside of society it's almost as if we're taught like men we're taught on how to be kind of fake men does that make mm -hmm. sense? And, and yeah. so what is, the, what is part of your message you're trying to get out to these men on how to like really be a real masculine energy and really dominate for a force for good, a force for, for God? Look, you know, whether you're a force for God, whether you're a force for yourself, whether you're a force for your family, whatever it is, like, you know, we've been programmed since we were little kids um, to lie. Yep. That's shocking to some people. Like, wait, what are you talking about? Our parents taught us to lie. Our school system taught us to lie. Our churches and our religion taught us to lie. And what I mean by this is if you think back to when you were a little kid, I don't, I don't give a shit how old you are. You go to elementary school, sit down, quiet down, slow down. Don't say anything that's going to offend anybody. And if the father says this is it, then that's it. Like, you can't yep. question anything. Don't ask any questions. Don't say anything that might offend him or her or whatever, whatever. And so we go from church to elementary school to middle school to high school. And then we add complexity to that where we're like, okay, here's what success looks like, which is, Go to school, get an education, find a, a woman or a man, get married, bang out a couple of kids, get a gold watch and retire. And, and, and what's happening is people are now in this, whether it's information, whether it's an awakening, you know, we're 25, 30, 35, 40 years old going, okay, I have the house, I have the cars, I have the money. I go to church every Sunday, I throw 20 bucks in the basket. Like, why do I fucking hate life? Like, why don't I wake up every morning? Like, why do me and my significant other right. do the same shit, say the same shit? Why is there just this, like, bleh in life? And, and, and most people that I talk to, when they really strip away a lot of the bullshit, which is, again, what I was dealing with, which is, yeah. how you doing, man? Everybody's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Because we're not programmed to tell the truth. We're not programmed to say, hey, I, I'm not happy. Hey, I'm frustrated. Hey, this. Hey, that. So we just lie. Yeah. And, and what I'm finding, like, with Lions Not Sheep and what we're really, like, pushing in the whole message of Lions Not Sheep is to just tell the fucking truth, man. It, like, it's okay to not have answers. It's okay to question God. That's a good thing. Right. That, that means you're going to explore new horizons. That means you start asking deeper questions. Like, when you say, I'm not happy in my relationship, cool, why? Well, because this, this, or this. Maybe your significant other is, is experiencing the same thing. I mean, I have a client to kind of illustrate this who um, – Long story short, he ended up cheating on his on his wife and got his his girlfriend pregnant, which is like, you know, you want to add like layer upon layer. And he really <laughs> fucked himself over. Yeah, that's right? some stress. And, I, and I'll never forget as long as I live. And he's a dear friend of mine. And, and, and he shared this publicly, which is why I'm sharing it. He came to me one day and he's like, dude, like, like. This is what I want in my in my relationship intimately like here's what i want my sex life and and my my wife doesn't want these things and this has led me to do all this other stuff and i was like okay cool i said how many times have you told her any of this stuff he's like well i never have because in my religion if i say here's some things i think about here's some things i want she's gonna be like whoa he's weird maybe he's looking at porn whatever whatever right yeah. there's all these labels that we put around especially in the religious culture right you can't say this or this or this just like go back to when we were little kids don't say these things. Don't ask questions. Don't talk about what kind of sex life you really want. Do we want to use toys? Do we not? 
I said, it, it's like crazy. Like people think this shit's nuts. And I said, I want you to go home and I want you to tell her this. And literally he was like, she's either going to fucking like his whole philosophy, his whole thought was she was just going to leave him. And so he creates this experience and he goes and he shares these things with his wife. And she's like, I want all the same things. Like, why have we not talked about this? And now their relationship's on fire. Like they, they you know, he, he had his, his girlfriend had this baby and their relationship is as strong as it's ever been. And it all came from them literally talking and communicating truthfully, not yeah. this superficial bullshit that we've been programmed to talk about, yeah. but like real deep, emotional, connected shit. And that's what so few people are doing nowadays is it's just this superficial, you know, conversation. And, and really what we're starving for is truth. People yeah. are starving for truth. So, so once you, you kind of, you went on your hiatus, you said, fuck your business, fuck your marriage. You started to discover this. How long did you go until you're like, I got to get this message out to more people and really make a difference. And how has your, your definition of success shifted since then? Well, first of all, I never did. I never woke up and said, Hey dude, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go do a video and it's going to go viral and I'm going to become this internet, mm. you know, influencer. I never did that. And today still, I, I don't do what I do now for you. I don't do what I do for other people. I, I have felt this calling and this, and this truth come through me where it's like, the more I share my story, the more I share what's working, what's not working. The reason I wrote, you know, my book is this isn't some long fluffy shit. Like this is the shit that has worked for me. Take it. If you like it, use it. If you don't, that's fine too. But like, I didn't wake up one day and say, Hey, I want to change the world. Yeah. I woke up one day and said, I feel a lot better today because I told the truth yesterday. So what's and I the think that's what so few people are doing. You, you know, all these internet guys and these people are trying to create, you know, Seth Gooden wrote a book called tribes years yeah. ago. He was a pioneer in this conversation. He's like, you can't, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care. You can't go buy a tribe. You can't go buy this group of people that are going to follow you and be like, Oh my God, he's so amazing. Like yeah. I literally started telling my truth because it made me feel better. And the more I told my truth, the better I felt. And the more I told my truth, the more people were like, well, shit, I like this guy. This conversation is a little bit different because it's not superficial bull crap. Yeah. And I think that's, what's really started to like take on is, is people see like, I'm, I'm kind of living the same way he was living. Like, I want to be free. I want to, you know, be able to tell my truth. And so I never woke up one day and was like, hey, here's what success means. Success means I'm going to have almost 700 million views of my videos and hundreds of thousands of followers. Success to me was like, do I feel better today than I did yesterday? So it's this art of fulfillment, right? Like it's, it's the emotional state that you're living in versus right. for me, my experience was the more money I made, the more success that I had on, on the terms of science of success, the worse I started to feel in my inner world. Like I yeah. felt this pressure of, I had to be someone that I wasn't in order to create this facade of who I, you know, what I thought people wanted from me. Right. right. So what's the first step for these people that are really stuck in there in that space of going down that path of creating that, that life and getting buried deep emotionally that they can set themselves free. What's the very first step that they can do and where they can discover that. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Simple That's guys. It. Tell the truth. Like literally, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you ask my clients to pay sure. me like tens of thousands of dollars. What I tell them. It's what I just told you. Like we go a lot fucking deeper because I help rip that shit out of them. Yeah. Because so many people are so buried underneath that. Yeah. But it's literally telling the truth. Like when you walk in today from work, all of the shit that you're thinking right now that I know the people that are listening are thinking and feeling, say that. Say that to the to, to your lover. Say that to your boss. Say that to your clients. Say that to your children. All of the shit that like comes to your mind but you suppress it with a bunch of bullshit where yeah. you add layers of complexity on it. Get rid of all that. If so, you had a, a conversation that you wanted to have with your lover, but you're scared to go have that conversation now today. Cause the longer you don't, the heavier that burden gets, the heavier that burden gets, the more lies you tell, the more you have to kind of hide behind it. And this is what's literally holding every single person back. I don't give a shit if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're, if you're young, you're old. Tell the fucking truth. Like that is literally the solution to every single, you, you asked me a question. How do we solve world, world hunger? How do we do, tell the fucking truth? Like the truth is 
We're not really going to solve world hunger. We can't feed every person. So what's the next step? Like now, how do we advance the conversation? Yeah. This is what so few people are willing to do. They'd rather just fill themselves with a bunch of, you know, airy, fairy, fluffy, puffy bullshit. But then they wonder why they're depressed. We wonder why prescription drug use is, is at an all time high. We wonder why divorce is at an all time high. It's because nobody's telling the fucking truth. Right. It was funny. I was recently banned from a real estate company because I talked about five steps to increase your uh, sex drive inside of your, your marriage. The number one was, uh, my, from my experience, have more sex will increase the sex drive, right? Like if you just have more sex, right? Why is it that society is starting to, to shun when you speak the truth, Sean, and when others like you are bringing out the truth? And, and what's the number one way that more people can, can get the voice moving forward? I think really what people need to do is they need to stop worrying about everybody else. They need to stop worrying about who, I mean, you know, this is again, some of what I tell my clients, the best salespeople on this planet don't sell anything. Like the very best, pe the very best salespeople don't sell anything. You just watch them, you see them, you feel them, and you naturally want what they have. Like it's the whole conversation of the lighthouse, right? Yeah. Like I spent so much time trying to chase people around and save everybody and save my family and save my friends and convince the marketplace that they should do this or that they should do that or that this was the right way or this, geez, the power's out again. This was the wrong way and it drove me crazy. It literally drove me nuts. It's what led me to being depressed and frustrated. And then all of a sudden I, I, I really understood this conversation about the lighthouse and the tugboat and I realized like, the less I'm out there chasing people and the more I just stand in one spot and speak my truth, the better it is for me. Like I feel better. And I think this goes back to the religious conversation and how we were raised in the social conversation, which is like, we're, we're like putting ourselves second or third or fourth. Like, like the noble conversation that most men have is like, well, I do it all for my wife. I do it all for my kids. I grind and I hustle for my family. Like, do you think literally working 20 hours a day and coming home as a grumpy asshole is helping your family? What are you teaching your kids? You're teaching your kids that life is beating the shit out of me, and that's okay. Yeah. There's a very, very, very specific reason when an airplane is crashing. Like, the very first instruction, when it's life and death. I'm talking life and death. Real, deep, real, like, life and death. The very first thing that you're instructed to do is put your own mask on first. But most people don't think that way. Most people think, oh, it's selfish, or Jesus taught me this, or the Bible says this. Well, the reality is if you're drowning, how are you supposed to help anybody else? If the airplane's going down and there's no air to breathe, I appreciate your nobility, sir, saying, well, I'm going to put my kid's mask on first. I'm going to put my wife's mask on first. Bullshit. You're all going to fucking die because there's no air. So step number one for every single person listening is, like, put your own fucking mask on. Like, you start telling the truth. You become liberated. You become free. You get all these rocks out of your backpack out, and then all of a sudden you can run a little bit faster. You can shine a little bit brighter, and people are starting to see that going, hey, you know, you know, Sally, I've, I've noticed that you're, you seem to be a little bit happier. What are you doing? I'm telling the truth. John, you know, your, your sales are up. Like, your, your, your energy in the office is good. What are you doing? I'm telling the truth. It's this radical, like, ridiculous thing where, you know, so few people actually do it, but you got to put your own damn mask on first. You don't do it to build a tribe, to build an army. You do it to fucking ensure that if the plane goes down, you have air to breathe and that then you can help other people. Well, I want to give you a quick shout out too. I know a while ago you put a picture up with you and your kids and your guns and I think in the back of a truck or something. One, one thing that I can observe from you that is you teach your kids how to use guns. Every one of your kids had their finger on right in the, in the spot off the trigger, right? And yeah. I, I think, because there's this gun debate, obviously, right? I think the biggest challenge we're facing is how do we teach our children, whether it's gun safety or even more so, how do they tell the truth and how do they put their oxygen mask on? So what are some things you do for your kids as a father to really help them put their oxygen mask on first? I, I, I don't tell them what to do. I show them. So as an example, so let's talk about that. What are your key rituals that you do as an example that allow you to share the truth or to be even more truthful? Look, you, you could probably, and every single person listening to this could probably echo this. Like you might remember one or two things that maybe your dad was known for or that, like his coin saying, right? But most people remember what their dad or their parents showed them 
versus what they told them. I mean, my mom always told me whenever I left the house, remember who you are. But I remember seeing my mom, like, kneel at her bedside every single night praying. Like, I'll never, the images are always there. So I remember a lot of the things that my parents showed me versus what they told me. And so I look at these three little souls that I have, these three children that I have, and, like, I can tell them to be, this is, it goes back to the same conversation. You know, all of these dads that are working 20 hours a day, grinding their ass off, like never being there for their kids and saying, hey, chase your dreams. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm stuck in this shithole. I'm stuck in this terrible job. I'm stuck being a victim, but you should chase your dreams, kid. What do you think the kid's going to do? They're watching their dad be a victim. They're going to do the exact same thing. And so when you stop and think about it, like, I, I, I show my kids, like, I, the reason I bought my race truck is because I wanted to show my son, like, not only have an experience we can spend more time, but I'm like, this is a dream of mine. And now I'm bringing my son into this reality where he's my co-driver. So I'm like, you know, go, go do those things. And, and we don't do that. We, we're, we're, we're a society and a culture of, of a whole lot of yapping and not a lot of doing. We try and teach people how to be happy when we're not happy. We try and teach people how to make a whole bunch of money when we're not making a whole bunch of money. And so for me, it's like, how do I want to raise these kids? Like, I want to show them. I mean, yesterday we spent the entire day at a racetrack, racing cars. You know what I mean? Because it's something that I love to do and I want more time with them. But like, we're literally looking at these half million dollar race cars and we're talking, I'm talking to the owners. And my kids are right there. And I'm like, what did you do? How did you buy this? Like, like, how is it to drive this? And I'm listening to this man's story and my children are right there listening to his story. Like you can't, you can't just sit here and give your kids lip service and tell them, yeah, go be, go chase your dreams, kids. Go while, while, while I stay in this shithole job that, that doesn't, you know, do anything for me. You know, there's a lot of hypocrisy in that. And, I, and again, I, I truly firmly believe that like my kids will remember what I did far more than what I told them to do. So stop, stop talking so much and start doing even more, right? Just start being aware. Talking about, I, look, talking about getting in shape doesn't get you in shape. Lifting right. heavy shit does. You know, talking about all your ideas at the bar with your friends on Friday night doesn't make uh -huh. money. Starting the company and taking the risk and putting your money up does. My, my, my client, my buddy, talking about, you know, the theoretical of, of having a, a really connected sex life doesn't actually connect you like actually doing the shit that you want to do. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that are yap, 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 yap. And this social media game has made it really easy for a lot of people. Um, but the people that are getting huge results are doing shit, not just talking shit. So, so let's go ahead. What I hear you saying that is, is be even more present, be even more patient, be even more in this moment, right? When, when I, I used to be in the space, not depression, but anxiety, I was fucking afraid of losing everything all the time. Like, could I do this over again? Right. And the moment I could, could clear out and get present is when it started open to me. So let's talk about something that really is important. What are some key techniques? Because you can't to create financial success, right? Like that's one thing that hinders people these days. You, you said you didn't yourself said you didn't know how to manage the millions of dollars. You've never been there. What are some of the key one or two activities that people can do to create financial success? Because financial success is important. This, this is probably one of the simpler answers I can give you. And what's really fascinating is so many of you will listen to what I'm about to say. But like, you know, whatever, dude, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. There's got to be whatever, whatever. Which is why most people continue to stay broke because they're always chasing like the entire elephant. The, the answer is really simple. Copy people that are already doing it. Let me repeat that. How do I create financial, like what do I do to hedge my bets, to make less mistakes? Copy people that are already doing it, period. If you wanna start a supplement company, go watch what Andy Frisilla does and copy what he does. Andy Frisilla is like, like this is literally one of, the, one of my favorite books was written by Paul Arden. It's called Steal Like an Artist. And he talks about how literally like all these ideas are just floating around, but the people that are successful are the people that will take the idea and turn it into something real. Like no one's reinventing the wheel. All we're doing as human beings is figuring out how to make it go faster. No one's, like, no one's recreating Mount Everest, yet thousands of different painters are painting it differently. Like, nothing is original anymore. So copy what's already working. It's the simplest, quickest path of least resistance to success. But people are like, oh, dude, I get messages all the time. Oh, I don't know how to make any money. Like, all, all this market's tapped and this market's tapped. Are you out of your mind? Like, are you seriously, like, t explaining that? Literally, there are people right now 
There are people right now making millions and millions and millions of dollars selling rubber penises. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. There are people around the world making millions of dollars selling dildos. People laugh, ha, 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 whatever, whatever. How fucking hard is it to literally create a rubber mold of a dick and sell it and make money? Obviously not hard, that hard because one, people are buying it, two, there's people selling it. So like these are the kind of things that I think about when I'm like feeling bad for myself. I'm like, oh, it's such a hard day. I'm like, asshole, wake up. There are literally people like making money selling rubber penises right now. <laughs> Like, why are you feeling sorry for yourself, bro? And everything, it's, I know it's true. Whoever just said that, it's, act, it's damn true. It's very, very, very true. Like, a lot of people laugh at what I just said, but if you really stop and think about it, it's God's honest fucking truth, which is why, like, if you're sitting around going, I don't know how to make any money, what do I do? Like, go copy somebody that's doing something really, really well and do it, do it your own way. That's, that's, that's one of the exact reasons why I've been hustling to get you on to this interview. Like I'm doing this simply for me because I want to learn even more from you, right? Like clearly you're great at being authentic and being truthful. So I appreciate you taking the time with me. Let's real quick before we wrap up, how can people, what is your business model? How can you help? How can people get help from you or, or learn from you or be involved with your tribe or your community? Um, I mean, you can find me on social media. Um, we're, we're actually getting ready to launch a new website, seanwhalen.com. Uh, everything will be on there from coaching to my, my programs to, you know, the tribes that we're building. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, you know, w what I try and help people do is, is get really, really clear on what they want. And, and, again, it boils down to the truth. Like most of my clients are, are already guys who are making, um, you know, high six, seven figures, uh, who, who really just are, are trying to figure out how to create a better life. You know, nobody, most of my clients don't call me and go, Hey man, I want to make way more money. Most people call me and say, I want to figure out how to have balance. Yeah. I want to figure out how to like do what you do, which is build a business and scale it and get to millions of people. But I also want to figure out how to ride horses with my daughter and race trucks with my son. And I think that's really like something that, that so few people are focused on is the lifestyle. Like, you, you know, you can build a business and, and have a lifestyle and have a life at the same time where I love Gary, Gary B. I love you. You're, 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 you're awesome. You're an inspiration. I've spoken with Gary. You know, I, I, I text Gary every now and again, but you know, there's definitely something to be said for the fact that like Gary, see, there's a lot of people that think that the only way to be successful is to work 22 hours a day. And that's total bullshit. And Gary puts on a, I mean, it's, it's his messaging. It's his mojo. But there's a lot of people that like need to understand that like that is the quickest way to burn yourself out, to end up divorced and to end up broke is working 22 hours a day. You know, I work, you know, some days I'll work two hours or three hours, but I'll get more done in two hours than most people will in 12 or 13 because of how clear I am. Because I'm, I'm like, how do I make shit happen? I get very specific, very deliberate with what I'm doing versus trying to like run all over and like bounce all over the place. So. Um, you know, that's kind of my whole mantra. That's my whole deal with, with lions, not sheep is, is it, it, at some point in time, you're going to check out, man, my, my ticket's going to be punched. And, and what I'm definitely afraid of is laying on my deathbed and knowing that God put ideas up here and passion in here. And I squandered it because yeah. I was worried about like somebody judging me, or I was worried about losing money, or I was worried about some asshole in some foreign country who made a comment on one of my posts and was like, <laughs> you're an idiot. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't do anything. I should just go back to being <laughs> miserable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, like that's that's the whole the whole thing, the entire message that I'm trying to share with people and, and really is just living my life. And people seem to be resonating with it. They appreciate it. They like it. And, and I think that's really what, you know, again, going back to that lighthouse tugboat concept is just shine your light man people just starving for it I, I remember so Ju july 10 2016 a good friend of mine mike hall passed away from stomach cancer and he was only diagnosed in february of that year that was the first time i think i was 31 at the time that i really well holy shit i'm gonna fucking die one day right like it, i'd been talked about like i'm gonna die right but that was the first day i realized that i was actually mortal and for probably three or four months, like I just fucking was a little bitch, like all the time. Like I was just down on myself all the time. But that was at that moment 
that I could then start to own myself a little bit more. And what I had recognized for me was that the more I fucking grind away in business every single day, it was like I was sucked into this vortex of thinking that the more I grinded away, then I would fucking get what I was really looking for, <laughs> which was to take my daughter to tumbling on a Monday morning or to be able to have prayer with my daughter or have meditation with my wife or to be able to just fuck my whole calendar for two weeks, no matter what was on it, because I was in charge of my choices. But yeah. it was only until I had four faced this idea that I could expire today, right? That's the moment I started well, eating. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but like a lot of people don't, I found myself last year really understanding mortality. And, and what I mean by this is I really started thinking about it. Like I really started understanding that most people who are struggling with depression are focused on yesterday. And most people that are struggling with anxiety are focused on tomorrow. Now, let me explain something. I could literally drop a pallet of a billion dollars, like a billion cash in front of any single person listening to this. There is literally nothing you could do about yesterday. You couldn't change it. I give you a billion dollars. You cannot change yesterday. And this is what I started to understand, man, what's really helped me start understanding appreciation and understanding like gratitude for this moment right now is I could give you a billion dollars and there's not a damn thing you could do about tomorrow either. Because the simple fact is you might be dead by dinner. Yeah. And that's not morbid. I don't walk around going, Oh my God, I'm going to die. Like, ah. I walk around going, I'm still fucking alive. I have yeah. breath in my lungs right now. Fuck you. If you don't like me, fuck you. If you don't appreciate <laughs> it. I'm going to live this second. Right yes. Now to Fuck explain. yes. Fuck That's yes. That's it. Like, because really, I mean, it's not morbid, bro. I might not see another fucking sunrise. Right. So when I wake up every morning, I go out on my back deck, and I've talked to people about this on every podcast. I go out on my back deck, and I, like, I freaking put my arms out, and I, like, breathe in deep, and I'm like, dude, thank you for another fucking day. Because I might not get that tomorrow. But all we're thinking about is our 401ks and our IRAs and the future and the future and the future. And shit, right. if I could go back and – I'm so sorry, and I'm so sorry. There's nothing you can fucking do about yesterday. So right. fuck yesterday. Yeah. Fuck all the mistakes that you made. Fuck all that bullshit. There's nothing you can do. And guess what? Newsflash. There isn't jack shit that you can do about tomorrow. Yep. So literally, the people in front of you right now, who are they? What are you telling them? Yeah. Are you telling your kids the truth, or are you waiting until they get older and when they're a little bit more whatever? Are you waiting until you go on the family vacation to tell the mom, the dad, the lover? Because you might not make it to family vacation. Right. And the real truth, man, is if you walk through a cemetery, and I did this. It's part of what I do with Lions Not Sheep and some of my coaching and stuff is walk through a fucking cemetery and look. Look at the names. Look at the dates. Some people die at 20 years old, 70 years old, 90 years old, 16, 8 years old. There's not a single person, not a single fucking headstone in there that wouldn't give anything to have one more hour. Think that through for a second. There are literally millions and millions and millions of headstones all over the world that those people would literally give anything for one hour to make that phone call, to fucking write that letter, to speak those words. And when you start living that way, when you start realizing, like, I might not have another hour, like, there's no guilt there's no remorse. I carry no fucking resentment. I carry no remorse for yesterday. I fucked a lot of things up. I did a lot of dumb shit. That's dead. Like, I have right here, right now, with my kids, with my ex-wife, with my lover, with my business. Fuck tomorrow. I might not get tomorrow. So what am I doing right here, right now? You start living that way, man, and you'll find joy and appreciation and a peace like you've never experienced before. How many of you guys watching right now are, are even just grateful just to hear that message? Put a, a yes in the comments below. So I want to get some advice from you because one of the biggest challenges that I face is once I dealt with this acceptance of, yes, I'm going to fucking die. I'm going to make this moment count for me. I then started to face this new fear. It was the, the fear of losing the people that I love, mainly like my mom and dad. I'm so grateful that they're still alive. I'm young enough that they're still here on this earth. But yet what I found myself doing was always like, almost like wanting to judge them or not even judge them, but change who they are sort of speak to almost make their journey better for the time they had left. Like, give me some feedback on how to just fucking accept them for being the beautiful people they are versus trying to, to change the people that have done so much for me. 
So I grew up with an alcoholic and abusive father, okay? Uh, my dad was an alcoholic growing up, and he was, he was verbally and emotionally abusive to me and my brother, okay? We got smacked around like everybody else did back in the day. You got the belt and whatever, whatever. But here's something interesting, and, and, and this might help a lot of people because there's so many people that carry around resentment and frustration and anger. It's just so unnecessary. But, like, as I started getting older, I started learning more about my father, right? And you're a little kid. You don't really give a shit. Like, here's grandma. Here's grandpa. I never met my grandpa or his dad. But here's something really interesting. As I started learning about my father, his dad was an alcoholic. And his dad was an asshole. I never met him. But according to him and according to my grandma and my family, like, my father used to get the shit kicked out of him. Okay? My grandfather used to beat on my grandmother and my dad. And so as I started getting older, I started processing, like, saying, well, my dad has all these issues. My dad is, is you know, bipolar or this or that or the other. And he treats me and my brother like shit. And all of a sudden, I started realizing, like, he doesn't know any different. Like, he legitimately doesn't know any different. He never had anybody steer him in a direction. He never had anybody, like, live, live an example to understand the difference. And all of a sudden, like, I started looking at people going, holy shit. They just don't know any different. Yeah. And, 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 and I went from, like, judging my father, saying he was a bad dad, and he was this, and he was that, and he was emotionally abusive to my mom and to me and my brother, to... I, I, I didn't feel sorry for him, but I started realizing, like, he literally doesn't know any different. Now, this is what separates someone who has this kind of epiphany and, and can live it versus somebody who's like, well, yeah, but he should have Googled it. He should have read the books. He should have gone to counseling. Da, 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 da. You're giving away all of the power. Like, you step back and you go, my father legitimately didn't know any different. And, and I love him for who he is. And I think what's interesting is if you look at people now in your life, like, my name's not Jesus Christ, and your name's not Jesus Christ. Like, you weren't put here to save everybody. You're put here to yeah. save yourself. Yeah. And so once you get to that place where you realize, like, all my job is is to shine as bright of a light as possible. And if mom sees it, dad sees it, my coworkers see it, my friends see it. Like, once you put your mask on first, once you realize, like, the higher the tide, it lifts all the boats. The better I can do, the better I am, the more money that I can have, the better I serve, the more I give away, the more I'm affecting the people around me. Like, I, 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 this, like, changed my entire life. And this is what I coach and what I talk about in Lions Not Sheep and in the Lions Den, you know, one of my groups, is I help people through this because this is real. Like, there's a lot of people that are carrying around a lot of guilt, a lot of mm -hmm. anger, oh, a lot shame. of frustration, especially about, like, you know, not only shame if you were the if you were like the father who did the dumb shit. Yeah. But there's so many people that carry around so much anger and resentment about family or how they were wronged or an abusive right. mom and an abusive dad. And when you stop and really think about it, like if you stop and really think about it, a majority of those people that made those decisions didn't know any different. And when you really start to accept that and understand that, you're like, oh shit. So now I do. I understand the difference because I've yeah. learned and I've created the polarity. So now I have a choice. Do I do what it is that I know? Do I chart new territory with my children? Or do I just stay in the same broken pattern that has been the existence? And awareness and is that key. I mean, unless you have awareness that you can then make that new choice, right? So Josh Saxton said, with where I'm at right now, I desperately am looking for any reason not to kill myself. Most of the reason why I started sh sh following Sean, um, I think he kind of answered what I was going to ask is like, how could someone in that situation have even more light, right? And let me tell you right now, him. Josh, let me tell you right now. Like literally get off this when we're done, get off this, put your phone on airplane mode and just go walk down the street. Just go fucking walk down the street. Just literally go walk down the street. That's it. Like, if you want to know why, why, what am I grateful for? You're, you're here for a purpose. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, all I know is that I'm looking out and I see sun. I see beauty. I see grass. I'm looking at little dogs and babies running around. And it's like, holy shit. Like, what if that is what I'm here for? Like, this moment right here, right now. This is why people, again, that struggle with depression, they're always focused on yesterday. They're always focused on shit they have no control over. They can't do anything about it. You literally, with all the money in the world, 
couldn't do anything about yesterday. Nope. You, all the money in the world, you can't do anything about tomorrow. So how do I, get, when I'm in this place where I'm like, fuck that, the life, whatever, whatever, jo- whoever it is, Josh, go just walk down the street and realize there are people right now with no legs. Realize there are people with no eyeballs. There are, pe- like, there are people right now that don't have what you have, which is an opportunity to have this exchange. When you start looking at the simplicity of life, when you start looking at like the beauty of just this tree, like I used to just drive past sunsets, right? And I'm, I'm going to a meeting and I, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And now I'm like, I find myself literally pulling over, putting my phone on airplane mode going, holy shit, this is the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. Yeah. And I say that every other day. But like it's literally experiencing everything right here, right now. Like that's the pure joy. That's where you find the most fulfillment. This isn't some hippy dippy hokey pokey bullshit. It's truth, man. And if a dude who's like slinging around a beard and guns and drinking whiskey and whatever, like I'm not, I'm not a fucking hippie. But I love hanging out with the hippies because they know some shit. I love hanging out with the dudes with the guns because they know some shit. Yeah. It's just literally like realizing, man, that I can't do anything about yesterday and I can't do anything about tomorrow. Like right here, right now, like I want to extract everything that I can out of this moment. I mean, it's funny because there's 7.5 billion people estimated on the planet today. And some fucking how we're just close enough to the sun that we're not freezing, but far enough away, we're not melting. Right. Like it's it's a fucking miracle that I even exist. Right. So I have that choice. Am I going to am I going to choose to to live that gift and to give that gift and to share that gift? Am I going to fucking bury it underneath and pretend like I'm worthless? Right. It's it's our choice. Right. So here's a question. Oh, go ahead. That's why I like religion is fascinating to me is is so many people like they get discouraged by not having all the answers. I'm, I'm like encouraged by not having the answers because now I get to go on a journey to find the answers, right? There's so many people like, oh, this is it. This is what God said this and anything else outside of this is all hogwash and bullshit. And I'm like, what are you out of your fucking mind? There's literally tribes and billions of people around the world that are receiving revelation, inspiration, whatever, whatever. And you're like limiting yourself to this little box and this one little thing. Like not having the answers is beautiful. That's what helps us like go on a quest to find shit. Like, <laughs> I, I'm fascinated by that. That's why, you know, I mean, I love like discovery and the whole concept of it, you know? Yeah, that's for me. It's like, okay, when I start to feel claustrophobic, that's the exact moment that I say, fuck it. I got to go create some space. I got to yeah. go on that walk. I got to get rid of my phone. I got to just fucking breathe, right? Like my biggest drug that I'm addicted to is air, oxygen, like getting high on my own supply. Like when I can do that in silence, and be aware that there's this fucking voice going on in my head. And I know you guys are fucking saying what little voice, right? Because it's this voice talking to you right now. And then I can fucking realize that I don't even need to talk to that voice. That I can just let it fucking go. That was my challenge, Sean. I used to think I had to, I had to out fucking debate my own voice in my head. Until I could realize I just, just had to let it go, right? So here's a question I want to know. What gun do you carry on the regular daily basis? The Glock 19. Glock 19. As I have one of those in my, in my, in my home safe, uh, in, my, in my office, and I carry a car, 9 millimeter. It just feels good in my hand, and it's cute, too. I got, I, everywhere I go, man, I got, I got one. Anybody that, anybody that knows me or has followed me knows how I feel about guns. So That's one question. One more thing. Uh, shit, I keep having one more thing. Fuck, I'll keep asking one more thing until you tell me no more one more things. So, Sean, as far as with, uh, let's talk about this gun situation in the U.S. because I think this is a serious conversation to be had. That there, there seems to be some a little bit of a threat with you know the right as a human being to be able to protect themselves and the right to own a gun. Let's hear your thoughts on that and, and what uh, what feedback you have. Look, this country was founded on war. It was founded in bloodshed. It was founded in fighting. It was founded in in you know turmoil and chaos. There's this idea, this euphoric concept that we're all just going to fall madly and passionately in love with each other. And we're all just going to sit around a campfire and sing Kumbaya and everybody's going to be great. There's this idea that we're going to eradicate evil from the evil's been around since the dawn of creation. There will always be a top of a totem pole. There will always be a bottom. There will always be somebody stronger than you. There will always be somebody weaker than you. That's just the it's this is the thing that's beautiful about this conversation is, is I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day and I'm like, you're talking about mother nature now, like, like the ideology of CNN and Fox and ABC and NBC. It's cool. I get it. Right. Like we all want to be equal. We're not equal men and women. We're not meant to be equal. I don't care if you believe in God, whatever, go on your own journey and figure that question out. But I'm just, I'm a realist. And I realize that there will always be evil. 
No matter how much they go, oh, well, let's just all be happy. Like, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So if that's the truth, then I want to ensure that I can kick evil's ass if evil shows up. Because it will show up. You're never gonna. You're never gonna change that. You're never going to change that. And that's the same conversation with. There's, there's always going to be somebody with more money and somebody with less money. There's always going to be somebody stronger. There's always going to be somebody weaker. Like if a whole herd of elk is moving across, you know, the plains, and one breaks its leg, they all don't stop and wait. They keep going. Like, sorry, motherfucker. Sucks to be you. That's just the way it works. That's how life is. So, at the end of the day, nobody's taking the guns. Like, I don't care if you're in. All these Europeans that are like, oh, dude, it worked for Australia and it worked for whatever. You're not. This isn't Australia, bro. This is America. This is how the country was founded. And it's never going to freaking change. So I don't buy into all the hype. I don't get all wrapped up in the headlines or whatever. I'm like, look, I got my guns. I'm going to continue to have my guns. Nobody's going to take them from me. Done and done. What's your favorite gun to carry, guys? Post it in the comments below. And also, do you support owning guns? Or are you a little bitch that says we should not have guns? I'd love to hear your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck you. you Somebody just said something. Guns. I want to say something really quick, and then I yeah. got jam. Yeah. Somebody just said, just asked the question, why do you cuss? Like, well, I'll <laughs> ask you that question. Why do you, why do you cuss? Let's see what you got. For me, it fucking feels good sometimes, right? Like, it just fucking flows well, right? That's for me, man. I just fucking love it. The other thing is... I do believe it disrupts patterns, right? I was taught my whole entire life not to say cuss words or say negative words. And fuck, it feels good times sometimes. I like it. When my daughter says, fuck yeah, I just won, to me, she's celebrating. I, let me tell you, I went, I went on this, uh, I walked 30 feet on fire, you know, hot coals, which I was this badass that thought I could do it because I'd already done 12 feet, right? And I remember about three quarters, probably about 20, 22 feet into this, and I'm walking on this fucking 1500 degree fire. I remember how fucking hot that was, Sean. And then I got to the end of it. The first thing was this just aliveness was like, fuck yeah. Like it just felt amazing. And it's like I, I was driving out to the, to the Mojave Desert with this guy who had told me, be careful of, of the toad juice. I didn't know what he meant at the time, right? But he was talking about the DMT that comes from toads. And, and I remember he says, never forget to live the fuck yeah life. And that was the moment that I gave myself the okay to live the fuck yeah life and just be okay with it. Not, no regards to what people thought or said or did. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. How about you? What is cussing? What is it? Somebody said that the word fuck is a bad word based <laughs> off of what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Again, that's what, that's the reason the name of my company is Lions Not Sheep. I just choose to, to do what I want to do and based off my rules and for somebody to say, you know, the word shit, it's a bad word. Like based off what? Based yeah. off what, what premise? Who, who decided to tell you that? Again, just one of those same rituals that's been passed down through generation to generation, which just like rituals, like money's bad. Oh, the rich are bad. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Bullshit, man. So you got to cool. rewrite your rules. So how many fucks did you give today? Zero. Zero fucks. All right, guys. There I, you I, have I, am, I am giving a fuck, though. Hey, Patrick, the, the power's out, as you can see, and it hasn't come back on. Third time, now it's down. I am giving a fuck because we got no power. We're trying to freaking uh, edit some videos and do some stuff. My warehouse is dark. My guys are trying to work on the race truck. So I am giving a fuck about the power right now. But One fuck. One fuck about, about the power. All right, there One you guys fuck. have it. There's Sean Whalen. Go check him out. Uh, his website, SeanWhalen.com or Google Lions, not sheep. When's your next live event? Uh, we're actually getting ready to release a schedule for some uh, my uh, book tour. I'm doing a, a book tour to go out and promote the new book. Um, and then we're going to do a couple live events um, and a few other events with some of my friends. So are you are you in tuned. Utah County? That's where you're at, Utah County? Uh, Salt Lake. Salt Lake County. OK, Lake cool. County. I'm, I'm up in Weber County. OK, nice. cool, man. Yeah. Sweet, dude. Cool. All right, buddy. I appreciate you. And thanks for coming on. I'm glad you finally let me hustle you out here. Have a great day. You're man. welcome. Hey, see, see you guys. All right. Number one thing I took away from there is be even more authentic. Be the real you. Be willing to be who you are bearing down below, right? And it's just give a fucks about what you're, you're trying to do, right? Like, don't do it for other people. Don't do it to please anyone except for what I've spoke about in a long time is that art of fulfillment, right? We've been talking about and bred like men for me, I was taught like successful was making more money, right? Like getting a bigger business, getting more money, having more stuff, right? Getting that bigger truck, getting that nicer house, getting that bigger, you know, bank account. What I finally realized is I was going to die if I didn't just slow down and breathe in 
the thing that I love, which is life, right? And so then I started to discover this emotional guidance scale, this idea of emotional state manage. If there's one thing I could suggest from my hallucination of my existence on this planet is begin to manage your state to where you go to that feel good zone. And part of getting to that feel good zone is be authentic, be true, stop fucking faking it. Just be you without regards to this mistake that you have made or the mistakes you're going to make. How many of you watching live or recorded has made some fucking mistakes in your life, put a bunch of yeses down below because embrace that. It's because of your mistakes, because of those challenges, that's where God's grace came from. That's where God was able to share with you an opportunity to become even happier, to take it to another level of peace, tranquility. Think about this. I got someone in my mastermind. We ran him through a breathing exercise. He said it was the first time in two years he's been able to feel relaxed. How many of you guys are going through every single day all uptight, all tensed out? You know those high achievers that get fucking stressed right here? That's where I get mine when I'm high achieving. I'm so fucking focused on shit. My neck tightens up. When is the last time you just said fuck your phone, fuck your schedule, fuck whatever you gotta go put your energy into and you just went on a walk like Sean said? I would challenge you to go do it because it owns your life. It owns your experience here on earth. So that would be the thing for me. A couple of things that helped me get to that that space more often, daily meditation twice a day for 20 minutes. That's followed uh, after I've already done about 15 minutes of transformational breathing. Oxygen, get high on your own fucking supply. Don't need to numb it down with all this other bullshit. Appreciate you guys being here live today. Give me a bunch of thumbs up if this created value for you and a bunch of thumbs up just to give a shout out to Sean Whalen because I've been hustling him for six months to get on here and I'm appreciative that he gave me 45 minutes. He told me he's going to give me 20 minutes. He gave me like 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm super stoked about that. Uh, also, if you guys are looking to buy or sell any real estate in the state of Utah, make sure you get a hold of my sales team, the WGR sales team. And if you're looking to grow your real estate sales business, make sure you check out fearlessagent.com or the wgracademy.com and, and join our next 28-day prospecting challenge. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, Bill says, daily prayer, Lord, help me make someone's life better today. And if I can't, help me avoid making someone else's worse. Say that every single day. Hey, let me give you one more prayer to say every single day. It's the moment that your feet hit the ground as you stretch up and you say, I love my life. Thanks for asking. All right, we'll see you guys later. Make sure to turn on those notifications and hit that fucking share button. See ya.